Hello folks and welcome back. Just a quick recap, this is what we're trying to build. It's a big vintage barn and the bits that are coloured in are done and the bits that are white are not. Here's where we left it last time and we did have a nice tarp over the whole roof but it blew off in the gales. At this point I just chose to give up. Right, let's get down on site and pick up the story. So the key to this build is now about speed. I can't take another few months uh, going to get this section done. So one of the things I'm going to try out now is chainsaw because to cut like an end off the circular saw I have to do cut on the top, rotate, cut, cut, cut and then reciprocate saw through the middle. It takes about five or six minutes, maybe longer. So I'm going to try the chainsaw, see if it's quicker, see what that cut looks like. Okay, so <laughs> to say that's quicker is an understatement. God, that's great, should have done this sooner. I'm now thinking I can just do the whole thing with a chainsaw. Uh, well, what it gives you in speed, it certainly lacks in finesse. Um, I wonder if I might just go over these with a planer. I don't need to, um, but I'm certainly gonna tidy up, like see these, uh, let me get on this, these sort of rough edges, but I mean, quickly go over that with a chisel would do that. Hooray, it's a cock up. <laughs> Quite big. Right, this one here, let's see how far we are from the end. This is actually piece number one. Piece number one needs to be 2117. Piece number one is exactly two meters. So it's yesterday's cock up coming back to haunt me. I did have two lines there and I've just chainsawed the wrong one. Oh dear. Now, it needs to be 2117 and the total length is 2090 so this is now shorter than what I'm going to need that feels like a big problem however have a look at this I've been very lucky number six which is down the end there needs to be 2090 which is exactly the length of this one and even better so number six down here because I've got quite a lot of um, excess at the end is in fact 2180 so it's long enough so basically number six is about to become number one and number one is about to become number six so just a quick recap for you beam number one which is in position three as you see it is about to become number six whereas number six which is already in position six is about to become number one this means that beam number one will sit in position six and beam number six will sit in position three Number three stays in position one. I mean, I'm not sure how I ever got it wrong in the first place. Now, this also reveals another concern I have. Uh, now, I, I was imagining that these were going to be left in the dry all the time. But given that the old tarp blew off, that won't be the case. But I was thinking, oh, if they're never going to be exposed to the wet. I've done all this stuff in Sharpie. It's like, how am I ever going to get that off? Normally it just goes. So I'm going to address this now because uh, I need to remark it. So I'm just curious to see if this stuff actually does come off somehow. I might have to sand it if it doesn't. Uh, not perfect, but adequate. I think I'll just use pencil going forward. Next shout out goes to John, who claims to be in a hotel in Newark, New Jersey, but more typically at home, which sounds a bit nicer, I must say, in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm not even sure I knew that's where it was, if I'll be honest with you. Anyway, he gets on the map because he's invented the saying, stick to it, Ivness. Stick to it, Ivness, I will. Thanks for watching, John. Well, I just went to loads of trouble setting up the camera <laughs> so I could film me chainsaw in those ends. Forgot to press record. Anyway, just check them all, they're fine. So they definitely need a bit of tidying up at the ends. They do just sort of, you know, lip out a bit. Also, uh, I couldn't get all the way through this. There just wasn't enough material. With hindsight, I should have sort of started the measurements a bit further down the beam. Um, so that's just going to need a bit of circular sawing on that. No problem. Right, this is going to be interesting. See if I can do this with a chainsaw. Again, another massive time saver. So this is the section here that I'm looking to pull out. 
so we'll see if we can do it with a adequate level of finesse. done it I mean I've argued we made it like slightly worse so well not worse it's fine we, we can pass that off as a little woodworkers feature right uh, so two tips is actually go in a little bit shallower than you think and finish with this reciprocating saw number one and number two cut from the side that's going to be shown so this side here is the side I couldn't see when I was cutting it and that is the side that's going to be seen within the structure so if I do that, it should be all right. <laughs> I mean, it's just so quick. Um, you know, I should have these legs done, or well, the chainsawing part anyway, in the next, I don't know, 45 minutes if I uh, pull my old finger out. My mask on, I don't know if you can hear me. Right, I think we have strayed into counterproductive because I'm going to have to circular saw that. Same here, just wasn't able to keep it on a straight line going down. So I think for cutting ends off and stuff like that, chainsaw is great. For this sort of stuff, I don't think so. Okay, in summary, none of these are what I call tragic but none of them are what I would call great. So after lunch, I need to come out with the, the planer and the circular saw and the reciprocating saw. So it'll be interesting to see how long it takes to tidy up. I mean, the one thing I will just say in favor of the chainsaw again, it's just a lot less effort to cut. It does hurt your arm when you're circular sawing. The, the chainsaw is pretty effortless. A bit like the mortiser. I think the chain is the key. Okay, it wasn't that bad in the end. I tidied them all up, just really with a circular saw and a bit of a electric planer. So they are good to go. So I'm thinking of doing some mortising now, so the wind doesn't go completely mental. So the tendon is going to be six centimeters by ten, but I want to go five mil outside that. So look at that cunning made a little cardboard template I've drawn around that so there you go they're all ready to be cut now the storm is freaking me out a little bit it's getting very blowy okay it's the first one done looks good nice and sharp so that matches up from that all the way up to the top okay so that's that one done that is actually piece number one and that is complete now Minor cock up then. I went too far over one of them, but that'll be hidden uh, by the strut. That's a tool barrow for you. Chainsaw, planer, circular saw, mortiser, reciprocating saw, impact driver. They're the big ones I used. Do you know Makita are doing a bit bloody well out of me? I'm thinking of starting like a campaign with my 12,500 followers to lobby Makita. Basically, semi free stuff. That's all I'm after. Okay, despite the very stormy conditions, not blowing this all away, I'm just going to tip these over, but all looking good. Right then, the legs are finished, there's the first one. Bit of rasping on that bottom one, it's a shame. 
It doesn't do it anywhere else much. There you go, intermediary, there's the one with a double on it. And that's leg number two. None on that one, because that's going to go, if you look at that bit of brickwork there in the background, up against that near the doorway. This one here is a mid one, and then this is the little short one, which has got its own little concrete pad just here, waiting for it. So earlier I said I'm spending about half an hour a day doing running repairs and a tarpaulin. Yeah, would well, you know it's turning into a flipping full-time job now because I had to do loads on this one. This is, um, you know, mid 50 mile an hour winds. We're in the thick of it at the minute. You can probably hear it. Uh, and I really don't want that one to blow off because although I've lost this dry space for the minute, that's actually okay. I quite like a bit of storage space being dry. God, see what I mean? Not worried about that little bit there. So uh, yeah, we've got to get through the next five hours. And if it's done that, we'll be all right. Oh, just one more thing to say. And just to be clear, these legs are 100% finished. So they're trimmed. They've got the end section to go onto the beams. They've got the mortises done. But like last time, I thought, oh, I'll do them trimming laser and all that. Total waste of time. Uh, so these now basically need to be stored. So what I'll do in the week is I'll swap these over for, well, I'll either do some more from here I'm actually tempted to do the struts, which are actually stored outside at the minute, but I need to have a little look at the wood. Right, I was moving the legs out of the barn into storage, uh, and the tyre went, that slime coming out is in fact slime. I've patched it up so many times that tyre, I'm going to have to get someone to come and fit another one. I have no idea how to achieve that, uh, but I'll look online. So I'm going to be working on the strut. So the fact that I've got um, four of the legs down the end actually doesn't particularly matter. Um, apart from anything, these struts uh, won't fit on this. These two rails are too wide. So I'm going to be putting them up on these planks. Now I've been storing some wood down here. Again, not exactly wood storage of the year award. Uh, I put this here ages ago. This is the thinner stuff. Uh, I'm still not quite sure how much I'm going to need because I've had a misorder from the wood yard. But um, I'm basically going to cut these with a chainsaw into one metre lengths, which means that I can carry them by hand because I haven't got the event to carry them over. So I'm going to do that now. Now, if anyone sees this, they're going to properly have me down as a nutter. I'm going to wrap a bath towel, an old one, round me. And the reason why is I can't stand chainsaw for any of the wood stuff the, the mortars are the same getting chips in my boots it's horrific and even when you think you got them out they just sort of nag away at you so uh, this is my boot chip protector I mean what do I look like I, I think the answer is a chainsaw wielding imam anyway what better moment than this to say maybe you could help me by giving the video a like, or even subscribing, or if you really want, clicking that bell thing. It's really appreciated. Seven pieces, and not a flake in the boots. There we go. Right, now remember the name of the game with the Annex is speed and efficiency. Now I've got seven struts to do here and when I did the struts, you can see there, for that section, I mean I did cut them all in one go and get them roughly the same size, but for some reason I didn't cut them quite at 45 degrees, which was insane. Now that they are, and here is my template, it just makes everything okay, you know, we've got a 45 degree angle there, that's 140 mil. That's 140 mil. It's exactly the same on the other side, which means that I can flip this over and use it the other way. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my favorite approach of drill holes on the key points, you know, like a, where are we? A little dot here, and then mark it out on the wood so I know exactly what I'm doing. Let's do that now.
there you go. No error. Okay, so I've just thought this through. Quite, they're supposed to be 140 mil, which this one is. But these ones here, I'm sure that's on camera, more like, more like 145 mil. So if they're wider, these are going to kind of be longer. The question is, do I line up on this top edge or do I line up on the bottom edge? Let me think that one through. Okay, the jury has decided. I have to make sure that I line up on the inside. Because as long as it is here, this is the bit that's going to go in, this is where the tenon is. If I push this down, it will actually make this smaller on the inside. And the smaller bit is where it's going to be going into the woodwork. I think. Still not sure about that. Okay, the bit that's non-negotiable, if you picture this, this is going to be a diagonal. You've got a tenon going in there and a tenon going in the top. That has got to fit into a hole. So if I line up to this and it goes further out, that's going to push that down. That's not good. This distance here, I believe, is the one that's got to be correct. And that therefore means that that's got to line up to that. If that lip here is a bit longer, it doesn't matter. It's just going to be excess sitting outside. Yeah, definitely here then. Right, I'm going for it. This is just really boring. I've got to do the other side now. There's no point starting the cuts. Okay, the other side's done now. That was really very boring, so we can start doing some cuts. Just trying to get a bit organised here to make this as quick as possible. So we've got this one done underneath here. I've cut that quite well. So all I've really got to do now is to saw down on that line there to remove this section, down on that there. I'll then have to do this little cut. We'll come to that later. And then just two cuts, one across there, one across there. And that middle bit is going to expose the tenon. So as I said, just trying to think of a kind of quick way to do this.
slightly tricky. Nice. Tiny bit of overlap, it's okay though. Teeny bit down there, good. By the way, I don't know if it's picked up on camera, but look. I sound a bit echoey, because we've got this on. This still came with these as well. So, although it looks like I'm braced for some sort of chemical weapons attack, I got a note on the channel from, and I can't remember the top of my head, so it's gonna flash up on the screen now. Uh, he said, by the way, watch out, because you know oak dust is like a carcinogen. Anyway, I looked it up absolutely right now i'm always working outside um it's not like i'm in a confined space and i'm not doing a huge amount but you know what I'm not taking any chances so uh yeah when i'm actually doing the certainly the fine sawing or the mortising or this is going on going forward so thanks name on the screen bloke now appreciate that hello always like a new camera angle so there we go first one's done here is the little mini leg going to have a strut. Does it go in? Yes it does. doesn't really prove anything. I mean it's all about how it lines up here but it's definitely a lot neater and far better quality than the ones you can just see in the background there. Uh, so yeah that's good. Right I'm going to go finish these off. Right we always enjoy a new tool on site. Look at this. Okay. Another offensive accent. This is a Japanese saw that a few people have suggested it and this is a cheap and cheerful. I can't believe it only costs 25 quid, so probably lacking quality, 
uh, but more importantly, I cannot believe that Amazon delivered it to my house and didn't make me sign for it. I came back in the evening uh, and it was on my doorstep. Anyway, not my problem. So I've got this specifically for at the very bottom of the strut. There's like a little overhanger notch, which I didn't do on some of these ones. And I just need to get in and just cut in an angle. Only about, you know, five to 10 mil. I don't like doing that with the power tools, it's too rough. So if I can just get in and just do it for that, that could be useful simply for that job. Nice. Well, I couldn't find any comments from Japan, so we're gonna stick in Asia though, and it's for Fred, who's out in the Philippines. He's challenging me to come and see his dodgy work practices. I think he thinks I'll be shocked. Trust me, nothing can shock me for dodgy work practices. Thanks for watching, Fred. Right, there we go. Six legs, seven struts. Just at the front of the barn here. Um, so just to create a bit of space, I'm gonna wrap this up in my big tarp. That's the one that was my roof that no longer is. There we go. Not very elegant, but massive great oak parcel. Ready for when I need them. So there you go, there's the progress that we've made. I've got the legs colored in and the struts as well. Getting there pretty quick. I mean, this took about three or four weeks in total. So we're ready to get on to the upper section now. Anyway, I hope you'll join me in the next episode where the British weather is doing its thing and you get happy looking scenes like this. See you next time.